or stories entitled King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. A very long time ago, there lived a very wise king named Solomon. King Solomon was said to be the wisest king in the world. He was the king of Israel, and the people of all lands heard of his great wisdom. King Solomon was a man of God. He was very loving and kind to all living things. It is said that a bee once flew into his palace. The king's men were angry with the bee and tried to kill it. They ran up and down the palace trying to catch the bee. Soon, Solomon entered into his palace and saw his men running after the bee. Solomon felt very sorry for the bee. He did not want to see it killed. So he stopped the men from killing it. He went and opened his window and let the little bee go free. As Solomon opened his window, he saw a long line of people coming to his palace. It was the rich and beautiful Queen of Sheba from Ethiopia with many of her people. Here we have King Solomon. We see him with his crown. We see a golden cup beside him. So it looks like a very rich person. Here we see the Queen of Sheba and she's being carried by some of her servants. She had come with many gifts of gold, lions and monkeys for King Solomon. She had heard of the great wisdom of King Solomon and wanted to find out if he was really the wisest man in the world. So here we have a picture of the Queen of Sheba and she has a puzzling look. She's really trying to find out if King Solomon is the wisest man. The king sent his men to bring the Queen of Sheba and her people to the palace. King Solomon sat with a lion on each side of him. These lions would roar if anybody did not tell the king the truth. When the Queen of Sheba entered, she was surprised at how Solomon's palace was well made and beautiful. May the king live forever, said the queen. I have come to learn of your great wisdom, O great king. Suddenly, the lions began to roar, but the queen did not know why. It was because she had not spoken the truth. She had come to test the king to see if he was really the wisest man in the world. She did not believe all she had heard. While she stayed at the palace, she thought of many ways to show that Solomon was not as wise a man as people said. But every time she asked something, Solomon would give her the right answer. One day she held a great dinner for Solomon. Many people were there. At the end of the great dinner, the queen spoke to King Solomon. People say you are the wisest man in the world, she said. I have something to ask you. Can you tell me the right answer? I can try, replied the king quietly. What is it? The queen then sent her men for six little children. They were all eleven years old and looked like each other. All of them had on the same clothes and their hair looked the same. I have before you six children, said the queen. Three are girls and three are boys. Can you tell which are girls and which are boys without hearing them speak? For a time the palace was quiet. This was something everyone felt that Solomon could not answer. King Solomon quietly asked God for wisdom. All the people were looking at him. Then Solomon smiled. He told the queen to let her men bring some water, soap, and a piece of cloth. Then the king told her to send for a bucket of mud. After that, Solomon turned to the children and told them to come forward. He told them to take some of the mud out of the bucket and play with it. After they had played in the mud, he told them to wash their hands in the clean water and to dry it with the cloth. Solomon watched the children closely as they did what they were told. Then he walked over to them. These three are boys and these three are girls, said the king. You are right, shouted the queen in surprise. How did you find out? 
King Solomon smiled. Look at these three girls, he said. They have washed their hands over and over again. They took their time and washed their hands properly. Then Solomon showed her the three boys. Look at their hands, he said. They did not take time to wash them properly. Little boys do not like to wash, said Solomon smiling. Everyone was surprised to see that the king had found an answer. He showed the people that he was the wisest man in the world. But the queen of Sheba still wanted to test the king. So one day she got her men to make some flowers. They were made just like the flowers in Solomon's garden. She was sure that Solomon could never tell the living flowers from the man-made ones. The queen held another great dinner for King Solomon. This time even more people came. The queen told Solomon she had a gift for him. She then showed him the flowers that her men had made. My men are so great that they have made flowers just like the living ones in your garden said the queen, but one of these flowers that you see is not man-made. It is really from your garden. Can you tell me which one it is? At first, Solomon felt it would be easy to find the flower from the garden. But as he walked through the flowers, he found that they all really looked the same. The king stood there for a long time. The people began to speak softly to each other. The queen began to smile. They all felt that, at last, this was something that Solomon could not answer. Once again, Solomon quietly asked God for wisdom. Suddenly, Solomon felt something on his hand. It was the same bee that he had saved from being killed. The bee then flew off his hand and into the air. Solomon watched the bee, but none of the other people saw it. The bee flew over the flowers until it stopped on one of them. Then the bee went into the flower that had pollen in it. Now Solomon knew which flower was the living one. So he went and picked out the flower which came from his garden. Here is the flower from my garden, he said. The queen looked at the flower. It is really the flower from your garden, she said. I did not know you could ever find it. The people were surprised and cheered the king for his great wisdom. And at last, the queen of Sheba believed that King Solomon was the wisest man in the world. Your wisdom is even more than I heard, she said. Soon after, the queen left for her land, having learned great wisdom from King Solomon. King Solomon had also learned something. From the bee he learned that there was none so great that he did not need help, and there was none so small that he could not give help. He also learned from the bee that even the smallest of things are teachers of kings. Alright guys, remember to do your little summary now. Remember the characters, remember the setting, remember the plot. So remember these questions then. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. Write your little summaries, send them to your teachers, and I'll see you in the next episode.